Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 32 of my algebra tutorial series. This is the next to last video, and if you've gone through all of them, you know basically everything there is to know about algebra 1 and 2. And in this part of the tutorial, I'm going to continue talking about conic sections. I'm going to talk about ellipses this time. Okay, so an ellipse is basically the set of points in a plane whose distances from two fixed points called foci have a sum that equals a constant. And the standard form of an ellipse is what you see right here. And let's say we have a central point for our ellipse. And we have our four additional points that are going to be represented by A and B's values. And I roughly drew in our ellipse. So this is going to be our central point that is going to be represented by H and K. We then are going to have this is going to represent B. And this distance right here to this point is going to represent A. And then hence, these points up here are going to be H, K, plus whatever the value of B is. This point over here is going to be represented with H minus A, K. This point at the very bottom is going to be represented with H, K minus B. And then the point on the far right is going to be represented, where should I put it? Let's just put it up here. This is going to be H plus A and the value of K. All right, so there is our ellipse and how it lines up with our standard form for creating ellipses. And what you're going to see is if you have a value for A that is greater than B, then our ellipse is going to be horizontal, while if you have A minus B, well then it will be vertical. And what happens if they are equal? Well, of course, that would be a circle, and that is completely different. So what I want to do now is I want to show you how to graph an ellipse that is in standard form. So let's say we have X minus 2 squared, divided by 9 plus y minus 4 squared divided by 16 equal to 1. Well, just based off of this information, I know that my center point is going to be 2 and 4 right there. So there is our central points. And then I need to find the value of A. Well, to do that, I just go and get the square root of 9, which is equal to 3, and the square root of 16, which is equal to 4. There we go. I have everything I need to graph my ellipse. And you can see that graph in the upper right-hand corner. Now, something that would be useful is to be able to find my x-intercept. And this, again, is just going to be math that we have already covered. So x-intercept, but of course it is extremely important to be able to do this stuff. So to find the x-intercept, I just need to come in and put in a zero value for y. Here is this, plus, and then where we originally had y, we're going to put a negative, or a zero, squared, and 16 is equal to 1. So this is going to be equal to, I'm just going to subtract 1 and get x minus 2 squared over 9 plus 16 over 16, which is going to be equal to 1. And this is going to then give us our final goal of x over 2 squared is equal to 0. If I multiply both sides by 9 then, I find that my x-intercept is at 2. And if we come over here and check on our graph, we can see that that most definitely is true. Now let's get complicated. What I want to do next is find the y-intercept. And this is going to be a lot harder. So what are we going to have here? Well, we're going to have 0 minus 2 squared divided by 9 plus 
And of course, I just put the value of zero in where there is an x. That's how I'm going to find my y-intercept. And over 16 is equal to 1. Well, this, of course, is going to end up being 4 over 9 plus, and I'm going to go and multiply these values out. So it's going to be y times y, y squared, y times negative 4, negative 4y, y times negative 4, 4y, and then negative 4 times negative 4, which is 16. So that goes y squared minus 8y plus 16 over 16 equal to 1. All right, so now what I need to do is use the greatest common factor to reduce this, and that is a fairly large number. So that's going to be 144 times 4 over 9, 4 over 9, plus 144 times y squared minus 8y plus 16 over 16 is equal to 144. And then if I go and simplify this out, this is going to end up being 16 times 4 plus 9y squared minus 8y plus 16 is equal to 144. Further simplifies to 64 plus 9 times y squared minus 8y plus 16 is equal to 144. And then I'm going to further simplify this to 64 plus, I'm going to multiply through, 9y squared minus 72y plus 144, which is going to equal 144. I can go and cancel the equal terms. So that is going to, just to save some space, I'm going to get rid of the 144 that are on both sides of our equation. So this is going to end up being equal to zero. And now what I can do is apply the quadratic formula. And if I do that, this is going to be y is equal to 72 plus or minus, so 72 right there, negative. 72 squared, and I have a video on the quadratic formula if you haven't seen that, but chances are I don't think you made it this far into the tutorial if you don't know the quadratic formula. And this is going to be over 2 times 9, and then we can say y is equal to 72 plus or minus square root of 5,184 minus 2,304 divided by 18. And this is going to further simplify, let's just put it over here, to 72 plus or minus square root of 2,880 divided by 18. And this gives us a final of 72 plus or minus the square root of, whoops, it's going to simplify down to 24 because this is going to be 576 times 5. If you multiply those together, that's going to give you 2880. And if you take the square root of 576, that gives you the 24. So that's where that came from, if you're wondering. 5 divided by 18. And that's going to give us now the final y-intercepts. And of course, there are two of them. So our first one is going to be y is equal to 72 plus 53.66 divided by 18, which is a y-intercept of 6.98. And our other y-intercept is going to be 72 minus 53.66 divided by 18. And I should say this is an approximate value, not an exact value is equal to 1.02. All right, so there you go. That is how we calculate our x and both of our y-intercepts. And if you look at what we have here on the screen, I think you can see that, yes, indeed, that looks like those are correct. And what I want to do now is show you how to graph an ellipse if you receive it in a general form. Okay, 
So the general form for an ellipse is going to be P X squared plus Q Y squared plus C X plus D Y plus E is equal to zero. So we're going to solve one of these. I'm going to show you step by step how to do it. And we're going to be using a ton of techniques we have learned over the course of this tutorial. This is why conic sections are normally covered last because they require a lot of what you have already learned in algebra. Okay, so the very first thing you want to do is you want to convert to standard form. So we are going to, to have this be x squared plus 9y squared minus 2x is equal to 8. I need to factor out the coefficient of our square term. So this is going to become x squared minus 2x plus 9y squared, which is equal to 8. I'm then going to divide by the coefficient of the square terms, which is going to be 9. So this is 1 ninth x squared minus 2 x plus y squared equal to 8 over 9. I'm going to convert x to its square form. So this is going to be 1 ninth x squared minus 2 x plus 1 plus y squared equal to, and this will end up being 8 over 9, plus 1 over 9 times 1. I then will convert it to its square form, which is going to be 1 over 9, x minus 1 squared plus y squared equal to 8 over 9 plus 1 over 9. And then I just simplify this. How about I divide this up a little bit here? So if I simplify this, I'm going to end up with 1 over 9, x minus 1 squared plus y squared equal to 1. And how did I get that? Well, <laughs> 8 over 9 plus 1 over 9 times 1 is going to give us a value of 1. And then I just rewrite this whole entire thing, and it is going to be x minus 1 squared over 9 plus y squared over 1 equal to 1. And of course, I can write this in our standard form to get x minus 1 squared over 3 squared plus y minus 0 squared over 1 to the power of 2, which is equal to 1. And of course, if we do that, we will know that h and k are going to be equal to 1 and 0. And the value for a is going to be equal to 3. And the value for b is going to be equal to 1. We can come over here and plot all of this. So there's going to be a point here. There's going to be a point here, a point here, and then 3. So that's going to be up here. And then 3 down. So that will be in here. And then we can come in and draw our ellipse which is going to look roughly like that. And there you go. I think a pretty solid coverage of specifically using ellipses in both standard form as well as in general form and solving a whole bunch of different problems. And I hope you have found that useful. And like always, please leave your questions and comments down below. Otherwise, till next time.